why would the average person want to know if there's someone threatening around them? I mean, most of the time we avoid people that we don't feel comfortable around, but obviously we might be feeling comfortable around certain people and we need to know what to look for. But why would the average person need to know about this kind of thing? Because the most virulent threats come from individuals who do not trip the trigger of our awareness. In other words, they come in under the radar. That is particularly the case with regard to women. And not only do these men, typically men, come in under the radar, but women are actually attracted to these men. These men exhibit any number of behaviors that make women want them and why, I was going to say, what were some of the behaviors that would get a woman, especially one with this type of you know, background, what would be something that would attract a woman to this kind of person? It's the bad boy. Just that they're charming? It's the bad boy image. And there is a, a dichotomy in female behavior resulting from the holdover of the strong biological predispos- predispositions that are related and associated with all attraction. In the 21st century, none of us really like to think about the biological predispositions and the factors, but that's that factor, the holdover from a more primitive time, is often determinative in my own research and others that looks at what women are really attracted to versus what they say they are attracted to there's almost always a discordancy between what will increase a heart rate or breathing um, or other physiological measure of arousal versus what an intelligent, educated woman will tell you she is interested in. Now, what about people in general, somebody who perhaps is a psychopath? First of all, how do you define that? And how would you ever spot that? Here are some classic characteristics. There's an absence, not just warped, of regard for others. In other words, there's zero conscience. Oftentimes these, these people are glib. They can be initially charming and psychologically very savvy. They view others as objects with attention to the one question going on in their mind, what can this person do for me? There's often almost always an absence of fear, an absence of trepidation, an absence of anxiety. These individuals do not worry. When caught, they attempt to talk their way out of a jam and oftentimes are successful at doing that. Um, Physical danger is exciting to them. Sex is often easy and exploitive, and they can be very good at it. And they can be very smart. And they can be, some of them are attractive. There's a cat-like quality as they interact with women. There's an autonomy, particularly in our culture, that reveres what we think is autonomous, rugged, individualistic strength. Looks exactly like what goes on with a psychopath. And women love this. They are attracted to it. Hollywood knows this. I mean, they preen bad boy images with a regularity that would make the Japanese railroads envious. Um, You know, on the first day that Scott Peterson... Let me give you an example of this. It's really fascinating. He and Ted Bundy come to mind. Well, the first day, on the first day of Scott Peterson's incarceration incarceration at San Quentin. He received 36 calls from women trying to get his cell number, his cell block number. They wanted to talk to him. Richard Ramirez, you might remember him as the Night Stalker, was extremely popular with the fairer sex. He got married in prison. I mean, this guy murdered a dozen women in the 80s in Los Angeles, Polly Class's murderer, a loathsome and miserable human being by the name of Richard Allen Davis, was always popular with the ladies, and he got married. And let's not forget Eric and Lyle Menendez, 
who shotgunned their parents to death. Leslie Abramson managed to hang the first jury, but they were convicted later. They got married in prison and to this day receive marriage proposals, calls from pen pals. Uh, we, women, uh, and you see there, there, are, there are female psychopaths. I was just going to say, this obviously applies to women as well. But we, but we don't, been... no, no, we don't like them. You see, we, women have to put on a facade because men don't like the characteristics that I, when we see them in women, we don't like them. But women do. So women put on an act if you're a psychopath. And oftentimes, and it, it's interesting, women who are psychopaths, because they understand what works, will become the exact opposite of cad-like autonomous, and they will pretend to be very feeling, sexually responsive, caring. They read books on self-help. Oftentimes, they'll come to a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist with the goal of learning, of trying to figure out. I found it absolutely fascinating um, I, in the uh, television series, the very popular television series, The Sopranos, where one of the last segments of, of that beautiful series included st a study on psychopaths which encouraged Dr. Melfi to stop seeing Tony Soprano because that study, it was, it's a real study, by the way, Yokelson looked at the fact that psychopaths oftentimes use clinical psychological insight to learn how to better work the world. Um, it, it was uh, an interesting uh, addition to that series. I had no idea about that. I mean, I remember the whole scene, and I remember her sitting at the table with everybody. Yeah, and yeah. The, wow. the study was um, study done by Yokelson. Uh, what's fascinating is is that probably everyone I talked to, myself included, would conclude that Tony Soprano was not a true psychopath because he was beguiled by guilt and concern, and that was one of the things about the character. But be that what it may, it's interesting that David Chase put that in. And young clinical psychologists are oftentimes taken in by these kinds of individuals. But getting back to this gender issue, because it's absolutely fascinating, women love the pure, frank, honest depiction of a psychopath. We, on the other hand, can't stand a psychopathic woman. We wouldn't have sex with them. We wouldn't be attracted to them. So they learn to be great actresses. And many of them are. And they come across as caricatured examples of what they think will work. It's sort of as though... You know, the women understand that men have a sweet tooth, to use a metaphor, and so everything they bake and cook is super sweet. Everything is coquettish. They appear to be very dependent and nurturing and sexually responsive, when in reality it's all an act. And who do psychopathic women go after? Why, rich men. So rich men, this is why you see a lot of physicians and a lot of lawyers being killed by their wives. And I saw a couple of weeks ago the lawyer in Tennessee. Um, I believe her name is Weber, and she managed to not oh, yes. only kill, but get away with the killing of her husband. And I watched her behavior in particular. You know, being in forensics, it's, a, it's an occupational hazard. You know, we come across these things, and there I see the interview... Uh, in in jail, and uh, she's interacting with a male detective. And you would think that she was a seven-year-old sweet little girl uh, the night before Christmas in her jammies and being sweet. And, you know, as someone who does this for a living, there was a chill up my spine. But they and many people engage in behavior that works. And uh, that's one of the... So you ask an interesting question right at the top of the show. Why would we care? We need they're to know... They're all around us, it sounds they're all, yeah, like. Listen, <laughs> Seriously. It's, it's serious business. It's threatening. And who is at most risk? A beautiful woman. 
I cannot stress this. You know, I, I've written about, in my book, I've written about murderous rage as affecting disproportionately beautiful women. And when, it, when we're talking about kids, think about this. You know, when I mention this to people, they'll stop and they'll go, you know what, you're right. And let me see if I can do this with you, Shelley. Think about all of the kids who are abducted and killed. They're mostly beautiful kids, virtually always. Mm -hmm. Psychopaths and pedophiles prey upon beautiful kids. Unattractive kids, they don't steal them. Pretty little girls, pretty little boys, they're stolen, they're raped, they're murdered. Beautiful women are the prey of the predator psychopath. Therefore, if you're a beautiful woman and you walk out in public, just imagine that you have a big neon sign on your front and back side which would read, all psychopaths enter here. Come here. I could talk to you literally. I, first of all, this whole thing fascinates me. I'm a big fan of movies like this, books like this. It just, it, it's just, I can't wrap my head around why, and I, I just love hearing about the inside thinking of these people. But, but I have to ask, because I have another interview, unfortunately, So, but I have to ask, how can one protect themselves, especially women, as you said, but how can we, you know, whether it's emotionally or psychologically, pick these people out or steer clear of them or avoid some tragic ending? Let me tell you something. It's not easy. And as I say, you know, people don't know what the training of a clinical psychologist is, but it's a four-year science, and then it's another four years post-grad, like medical school, and then it's a two-year internship, two-year residency, and then a fellowship. And it's still hard for us. And what a woman, a woman cannot be isolated. A woman must have surrounding her intelligent, thoughtful, educated people. She must always be in touch with a support group and individuals who know a thing or two because it becomes a statistical lottery for the psychopath. You may be able to fool the target of your affections and desires one time, but you may not be able to fool her friend. You may not be able to fool her father. The the Petersons, the uh, the um, Lacey. He fooled all of them. He fooled all of them. He was very very good, and that illustrates my point. But the more people the psychopath has to fool the more difficult it is. So if you find yourself isolated or if you, um, you, you know uh, you know that song, uh, it's a very popular classic song, um, He's a Magic Man, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and it's a song really where the lyrics, uh, the first person speaking is to the mother. But mother, you don't understand, he's a magic man. That's a song about psychopaths and women need to understand their limbic system and their attraction to the dregs of the world. Hollywood knows this. Marketers know this. And psychopaths know this. And, you know, it's not a popular topic in today's society where we put neatly aside our primitive biological predispositions. But look, real sex and real attraction is always chemical. It's always a chemistry. And I've never met a woman who will not look at me and say, you've just said exactly the story of my life. I have felt this. I know that I shouldn't do these things, but what do I do with these feelings? Well, it boils down to control your feelings and talk to other people. Wow, you are just absolutely fascinating. This is just, uh, like I said, I could talk to you all day long. Um, I'm going to have to make this, my segments are only three minutes, but I'm going to have to make this a two or three day thing <laughs> because there's so Well, let's so talk much. later because it's, it's, fa I would it's, fa love to. it's fascinating oh. in terms of the risk for, for beautiful women. Give me, um, give me your website later or, or write me and I'll send you a chapter on murderous rage in because the book. I 
I also, too, I live by myself. I'm divorced, and yep. I'm in the public eye, that kind of thing. You know, and I'm a very trusting person, and I, you know what I mean? And I've always kind of feared and always, but because I, I am pretty well-educated, I also know what to look for, what I think to know to look for. So I've always had that kind of thing in the back of my mind when I meet I cannot, people, especially Shelley, now. Shelley, I cannot tell you how many intelligent, accomplished, oh, well, professional right. women yeah. I spoke with it a woman matter. with a woman yesterday, brilliant actually, and uh, she barely escaped with her life. And it doesn't matter, yeah. It because, because exactly it, it doesn't. It, it really actually works against you because an intelligent woman can come up with any number of rationalizations and explanations for why she should engage in any behavior. And at some point, you say to yourself, "Look, life is short." And yes, I have yes. to, right, right? Yes, and I've actually been in that situation yes, once yes. or twice, perhaps, and yes, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, you know.